today was the last game of the season before United face Man City in the FA Cup as the actual last game of the season. Well, last game of the English Premier League and obviously the last game of the season officially overall is going to be our game against Man City which should be a good one to be fair even though we're depleted got a few injuries even though we're not playing well I think as a spectacle it, pretty, it should be a good game our players are jammy motherfuckers they don't really turn it on for the rest of the the rest of the season or the majority of the season but they always seem to turn it on whenever we face our biggest rivals whenever we got the flipping you know um, what do you call it social media galactico no social media um, whatever um I forgot what the name of it, but they call it something anyway online. Or when we face Arsenal, so whenever we face our bitter rivals, our local rivals, our league rivals, our players seem to always, 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 always um, turn it on. So I have no doubt. There's no doubt in me that most likely we will play pretty well against Man City in the final of the FA Cup in a week's time. I've got no doubt about that. But that aside, we did have the last game of the season, and today's last game of the season was against Brighton. And we somehow managed to win 2-0 against Brighton, although we played pretty poorly for the majority of the game. I think Brighton were the better team, um, just in terms of how they played. Um, they were able to pick us apart at will. But I think as per their entire season, defensively, they're not really where they should be, which is probably one of the reasons why if I was going to be a De Zerbi fanboy, I'm not really. Um, I'm not really involved. And I don't really care about all the managerial conversations. I'm not going to lie. I'm one of those United fans that's, that thinks our main issue is the Glazers. I'm not one of those United fans that thinks that we're going to suddenly become the best team in the world if we hire Pep Guardiola. Like, I honestly do think now, if we were to hire Pep Guardiola and have Max Allegri as his assistant, we still wouldn't win anything. Um, I don't think people realise how deep-rooted our problems are, especially from the Glazers, because they've instilled or they've kind of laid the groundwork you know with this kind of culture at united where essentially nothing really gets done there's not really a there's not really um a need a drive for us to be the best sporting team in the world we obviously have a need and a drive for us to be a commercial success as you can see with the shirt sales and with this malarkey what's going on business partnerships collaborations advertisements whatever but when it comes to sporting success and winning trophies the club's not set up that way so because of that loads of things occur whereas you're signing marquee players you're holding onto players and you're you know giving them new contracts just to increase their value you're not really buying players with a plan to win things you're buying players more with a plan to sell shirts all this stuff is happening so for me personally i feel like managers don't really solve an issue don't really solve anything but if i was going to be on the whole manager thing i would be a little bit concerned about the Zerbi because brighton although they play good football they do seem susceptible to lapses of concentration defensively the Zerbi kind of reminds me a little bit this is going to be a little bit sacrilegious to say but he does remind me of a more polished version of a more attack of a more aesthetically pleasing version of a pochettino Pochettino could have his teams playing good football, but defensively, can you count on them to hold on to a lead? Can you count on them to, you know, have a clean sheet? Can you count on them just to be defensively solid? Not really, but they're going to play good, fast attacking football, which is okay. But I think with United, we probably need a bit of a balance. But obviously, if you want to start from ground zero, because I think, you know, there's going to be, there's probably going to need to be, there probably might need to be like two or three managers after Ayrton Hogg before we probably start winning trophies again. There's going to need to be managers who kind of lay the groundwork for the guy that's going to come further down the line who's going to get us to win trophies. I don't think any of these guys coming up now will be the ones to lead us to glory because there's so much work that needs to be done. So that aside, um, I still think the Zerbi does a good job of getting his team to play the way they want to play. I think the main point why people kind of bring up the Zerbi, they bring up the manager at Crystal Palace in comparison to Eric Ten Hag is that Eric Ten Hag always talks about injuries and not having certain players, which I understand and I get his, and I sympathize with that completely. The issue I think we have, myself and other United fans, is that even when we don't have our players that we need, like the starting eleven that we would all favour, or his strongest eleven, or the players that he wants to play the football that he wants, it's still a bit odd because why aren't then why aren't the players who are like second fiddle why can't they play this certain brand of football that he wants us to play anyway why is it only the first team the people that he actually wants to pick are the only ones that can achieve the football that he wants why is that the case it doesn't really make any sense to me so whenever people make comparisons with Ayrton Hag and the Zerbi and those other coaches because they've been at their clubs for a lot shorter time than Ayrton Hag or same amount of time and they've got their teams playing a certain way regardless of who plays if they play the kids 
if they're playing all the first teamers they all play a certain way and you could see a you know you could see basically the style of play being kind of filtered down to every single kind of you know lineup that they kind of play every player knows what their role are blah de, blah 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 we don't seem to have that at the moment and for me that's a problem because ultimately what that means is that you're not l likely to win games based on how your tactics and formation and shit you're only hoping to win games via individual brilliance which is okay if we're man city but we're not we don't have the we don't have endless funds we have a lot of funds we're not endless funds so then you have to go out and sign these players who can give you individual moments of brilliance now nowadays i feel like it's getting harder and harder to do that i think nowadays because we've been we've probably been we've probably been terrible long no we probably we're probably going to be approaching soon being terrible just as much as time as we've been good so a lot of players coming up now have probably never seen us be dominant or see us be amazing. So it's hard to get these players to convince us to come to United, especially considering how we give players, you know, we kind of put them through the ringer, playing for United. United comes with a lot of pressure, comes with a lot of scrutiny. It's probably not worth it for a lot of players who actually want to make a name for themselves and kind of go on to do greater things. So you're left with this, you're in this weird place now with United where we maybe aren't good enough to buy the Mbappes of this world. But we're obviously getting bumped when we try and buy when we buy obviously the Antonys for a hundred mil nearly. So we're in this weird position where we have a manager that can't get a style of play, you know, implemented unless he has a certain brand of certain level of players. We can't sign those certain level of players because our you know the structure above is terrible. We have no idea what Ineos is gonna do. And we have players on our books that we can't seem to get rid of. Weird situation to be in. So anyway, all that aside. I thought the formation today was pretty interesting. Or the formation against Brighton today was pretty interesting. We had essentially no strikers playing up front. And we played this really strange 2-2-2-2-4 two, 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 formation. Where we had Bruno Fernandes and Scott McTominay playing basically in the false nine positions. And then Garnacho and, D and Diallo playing as wingers. And then Amrabat and Maino playing in the midfield. Personally, I didn't like it. Um, I thought Fernandez was doing his own thing, but Tomane was doing his own thing. There wasn't any connection or teamwork or like duo or partnership between the both of them. McTominay is big for nothing for the most part. Unfortunately, he's one of the players similar to like Pogba. I think he suffers from the just because he's big, people assume he's a defensive midfielder or that he's physical. He's not really physical. He doesn't really use his size to his advantage. He is probably a little bit more of a fox in a box, a little bit more of a late runner in the era. He doesn't even do that thing. I think even Lampard was better at doing it. Lampard was better at physically imposing himself in the area when he's running onto shots. So he's not like that. So he doesn't really do what you need to do if you want to put him up front as a false nine. That didn't work out. Um, Garnaccio and Diallo were fairly decent. Um, Garnaccio, I'm starting to have a little bit of an issue with when it comes to running down the wing I feel like when Garnacho runs down the wing most of his most of his time is spent thinking about how he's going to get a shot on goal and I feel like the manager lets him do what he wants I don't think the manager cares that he does that which is weird because surely you increase your chances of scoring if you cross the ball into the box but he doesn't he tries to go for shots at weird angles and most of the time, tight angles, the keeper's going to save them, especially if they're in the near post. So then you won't get a chance at kind of having a ricochet into the box or whatever, or corner. So it's a strange thing. So I'm getting a bit tired of Garnacho doing that. Although he is pretty, you know, he's on it. He's always running at defenders and stuff. So that's good to see. The Ahmad Diallo situation, I don't still can't get my head around it. We've only seen him play starting a couple of times this season for United, especially towards the end of the season, just because we're so down in the dumps. So he had to play him. But we've all known he's been a an amazing player anyway. There's people online calling him the African the African Messi, for goodness sake. But he's clearly good enough to start the face United team, but he hasn't. So the fact that that's happened still needs to be questioned, but he played okay, I think. Amrabat was fairly shaky. He got caught on the ball way too many times for me. But again, I don't think he got caught on the ball any more times than what Scott McTominay does playing in the same position. But I still would sign him, you know. I know Amrabat was a loan signing, but I would still would sign Amrabat. I swear to God, I would sign him just to have as a squad option because I don't think we're in a position to let go of midfielders. I don't really understand this. Like, we did the same thing with, what's his called? With um, the guy from fucking Dortmund. We did the same thing with that, with the guy we had on loan. And I don't understand why we let go 
of players in midfield when we need the bodies. We don't have the quality. And Maino, I personally think shouldn't have played it. He probably should have played where Bruno Fernandes was. Um, they should probably swap position. I also don't like Bruno Maino being told to play this deep landing position. I think he's more of an eight or a ten than he is of a six or a four. But you know the club are gonna do what the club are gonna do. It was good to see um, Martinez back. I thought Casemiro played a lot better uh, at centre back. Um, clearly, he's improving at playing there. He's gotten a bit used to it. But again, it was the last game of the season. Brighton weren't really doing much apart from keeping the ball. Really, they didn't really test us. Really, there wasn't really much pressure, much uh, you know urgency with the game. So I think people need to relax by saying Casemiro was world class and shit. It was okay. Wan Bissaka is Wan Bissaka. Can't wait for him to leave. And Dallo obviously scored the goal and looked fairly decent. Um, so yeah, all in all, decent performance. We got the two. We got the we got the victory at needed end of the end of the game. Um, Dallo's finish was very very well taken, very clinical in the box. Rasmus Hoyland's build up play was probably the most impressive thing about the goal. Um, I think um, we all know he can finish, but sometimes his build up play, hold up play, or whatever before the goal goes in the before the ball goes in the net is a bit skept is a bit you know on the shaky side. But I think he showed why a lot of people like myself are big fans of him. Because of his ability to kind of drop a shoulder, run into the box, finish with either foot. Like, that was a really tidy finish. Very, 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 very tidy finish into the bottom corner. So, very happy for Rasmus Hoyland to get that second goal and seal the victory. But, of course, the game was pretty shit, like I said. Pretty boring. Um, we probably didn't deserve to win. But, again, as per usual with United, we have the better players. So, we're always going to punish teams if they don't take their chances because we have the better players. But it's not necessarily a good indictment on the quality of the game. Okay, that to be said, I was actually happy how it ended though. Because the way it ended, as followed because of the MUFC MPB account, Man United finished 8th in the Premier League. No European football next season unless United beat City in the FA Cup Finals to secure Europa League. 8th place is Man United's worst finish in Premier League history. I'm happy this happened. Why am I happy this happened? Because I feel like sometimes European football, especially amongst our fan base, is almost like a way for us to excuse or to cope with how bad a season's gone. Oh, at least you've got European football. At least you've got European football. Whereas I feel like European football should be given to the... Deser it's like a deserving slot. It's like an illustration or an example of how far you're progressing or how, how much you're progressing in a season that you're able to kind of, you know, secure a European place, even though you don't win a trophy. It shows that you're kind of competing with the top teams up there. But the fact that we finish in eighth outside of all the auto outside of the automatic places and now we have to rely on winning a trophy against man city to play european football i think is perfect and it doesn't give anybody any false hope because i feel like some fans would have seen this 2-0 away from brighton away to brighton result especially considering how they played against us in the first game of the season they would have seen that result and thought oh we're doing well give Ayrton hug more time give him more money blah 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 na 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 nah. no no, 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 no. No more money, no more time. Eighth is where we're at. This is not good enough. He needs to go, as do all the players that have been kind of responsible for this league finish. It's a reminder that league positions, for the most part, are a very accurate representation of where you are as a club. And if we're eighth, we deserve to be eighth. If anything, if anything, if you ever watch us play football, you would know that United probably deserve to be far lower. If anything, United deserve to be far lower in the Premier League considering how poor we've been the entire time this season. But we've gotten lucky with individual moments of brilliance. We've gotten lucky with just being lucky in matches. We've won matches that we probably don't deserve to win. We've just been able to jam it up. We should be far lower than eighth, really. If anything, I think if the final actual table, the final league table is, at, is kind of embarrassing because it kind of proves that the English Premier League isn't as competitive as people like to make it seem and the quality isn't as great as people like to make it seem. So let me actually see, I think the table is somewhere here and the point tally is kind of wild, I'm not going to lie, because we're shit. We're shit, right? And, we're, and we finished 60. We finished with 60 points this season at eighth. But look at the team that finished fourth. They're only eight points above us. Aston Villa finished in fourth place or let's say even Tottenham, right? That's an automatic European place. 
they're only four points ahead of us. Can you or six points? So can you imagine how embarrassing that is, considering how terrible United have been? That we're only six to eight points away from being in the top five and finishing, you know, European places automatically. It's quite embarrassing. So the top two teams, City and Arsenal, obviously pulling away from everybody, but the rest of us are just fighting for scraps really for the most part. But again, I'm happy we finished the season in eighth. That's what we deserve to finish. Hopefully this season, this summer. We see some big changes, mostly in outgoings. My main kind of barometer of where we are as a club and where we're trying to go and to kind of have an idea on whether or not I'm going to you know, be um, confident with the whole Ineos are in charge of the sport inside of our club is if the outgoings are very ambitious because the outgoings need to be important. Already they've confirmed that Varane and Martial are leaving. Martial end of his contract. Varane obviously getting a bit older and obviously injury prone. That makes sense. And that's a, those are easy decisions to make. But the hard decisions to make, what do you do with Marcus Rashford? What do you do with Bruno Fernandes? What do you do with Harry Maguire? What do you do with Scott McTominay? Luke Shaw? All these people are much harder to make a decision on. But if you're actually a top club, you, you get those guys out because we need a refresh. We need to start again. Um, Arnie Sloth that's going to fucking um, Liverpool, like he's walking into a Liverpool team that's not going to have Salah there. If, Liverpool, if Salah was still playing for us, we'd be holding on to him until he turns fucking 42. But he's going to leave um, Liverpool at the end of this season. Um, Thiago Alcantara, all these other players. So he's going to come in with a clean slate and able to kind of dictate what goes on forward. And be able, and you also be able to judge Arnie Slough better because we have his own players. So I think Ayrton Hag, if he does stay another season, I don't want him to, but if he does stay that last season, they'll need to get rid of a lot of players. And maybe some of the players that he signed, maybe even the Antis might need to get rid of as well because we can't be going into the next season relying on the Aaron Rambasakas, the Harry Maguires, the McTominays, even just the Brunos in terms of him playing every single minute, every single game when fit. I don't like that anymore. So hopefully we see a change with those things going forward. Hopefully we do see a change with those things going forward. We can only hope. We can only hope.